Let's have a little chat about N-Series, the worst thing that Nerf has ever made, and it's gonna save Nerf and the community at large by bankrupting Nerf and bankrupting Hasbro once and for all. And it's also gonna keep kids safe for years to come. Huh? I loaded it backwards. I loaded the dart backwards. How did this happen? I am actually as dumb as a five-year-old. Hi, I'm Brett. Sometimes I wear a beret and sometimes I get a little confused because N-Series has been a pretty controversial line for Nerf. It's probably one of the most controversial things that Nerf has put out in recent memory. And yes, I can think of quite a few things that have caused a stir in the foam flinging community. I'm very late to officially talking about N-Series in any capacity. I really wanted to kind of stay away from the topic until I got my hands on at least a product and have played with the darts for a little bit. And now that I have been able to do that, I can give you my honest feedback, my honest review of the blasters and the darts. And that's not totally true because I still haven't used every single blaster. But I've seen so much at this point. I've been able to wade through what is the PR, what is the real user's experience, and my ultimate thoughts to get it right out of the way is, eh, not even a meh. Meh was like the Ultra One. N-Series is just kind of like a eh, not necessarily a, a bad eh, just kind of a eh, it exists. I'm communicating in teenage boy language, you could say. Okay, fine, one big gripe to get out of the way. You're not allowed to disagree with me on this one because it is factual and it is entirely fair. N-Series, the name, dumb, bad idea. Calling the darts N1 darts, bad, dumb. What are we doing here? And if your immediate response is, hey, didn't they have the N-Strike line? You're right, they have officially called a line N-Strike, N-Strike Elite. They did it once, they're allowed to have it. They made N4 swords. Okay, okay, I give you a pass, that's fine. It's in the past now, it's okay. But that was the N-Strike series. And now we bring you the N-Series, which I have to assume that N is just short for nerf. But what is it then? The N-Series series? Is it the N? series and i mean come on n1 darts at least like the n strike line had streamlines elites then like ultra comes out and they're just called ultra darts you couldn't like okay i get the naming kind of follows suit with that but that's so boring come up with a better name at that point i don't care if you're for the n series line or against it we should be able to agree that the naming convention for just the overall line in general Bad. That's probably why I wasn't invited to their party. And let's start back in June when the N-Series line first debuted and we actually saw some first insights at the influencer party, you could call it, at Hasbro HQ. That's right, I was not invited. And every day I wake up and have to remind myself that. What was the reasoning behind it? I don't know. They didn't send me an invitation. Am I salty about it? I mean, let me be completely honest to you. If I'd gotten an invitation, I would have gone. Don't hold me on some pedestal of like, oh, I'm sure Beret would never compromise his integrity to go to Hasbro HQ. If I was invited, I'd love to see these things in person. I'd love to see the new N-Series stuff, get the first taste of it and talk to the people who maybe worked on it. And then as it turned out, there was also the Nerf Pro stuff there too. I don't care what you think about it right now. At the time, I would have loved to have had the first eyes on it with some of my friends there. I really don't know what the criteria was for inviting certain people. If you're saying it was a certain social media following size, I can point to reasons that might not be true. And if it was like, oh, it's because you only say positive things about Nerf, I can also point to things that don't make that to be true. So maybe Nerf just doesn't like me. And if that's true, then that's fine. It's their party and they can invite who they want. So it's all good. I have no problem with the people who went. And if anything, I got some interesting insights out of the, uh, footage and the testimonials from people who did go. And I kind of wish that Nerf actually shared more of it themselves because one of the most interesting things that came out from the influencer experience at Nerf HQ was the kind of rationale for why N-Series came to be. From that, we kind of learned about the direction that they took. I took away from that that N-Series was kind of trying to be the reinvention of the 8 plus line. The reinvention of a new dart because they're trying to make it worldwide mass produced where some of their modern offerings actually don't cut it and why like slam fire is removed from those blasters because they just want to put them in the hands of more people across the world you're welcome to disagree 
with the implementation, it doesn't justify all the decisions, but I like hearing the story, including the parts where some prototypes went one direction versus another because kids said so. Again, this was meant for kids. The reinvention of the 8 plus line. Cue the big Lebowski clip. Eight year olds, dude. So I really think Nerf could have shared some of those behind the scenes details and it would have gone over pretty well for at least people in the community who need to constantly be reminded, knock, knock, hello, not everything is for you. You're actually double the age demographic or even triple sometimes. Granted, I should still want, if I'm an enthusiast, I should still want to pick up a product like this. But the point was, hey, we're making this new blaster series. We're reinventing the dart to try to be more mass appealing and more widely accepted into a world where the regulations are ever so changing. And in some cases, their hand has kind of been forced from that. Now, does that justify the creation of a new dart? I don't know about that. They don't seem to be any more dangerous than your standard Nerf Elite dart. Good, well, the Nerf Elite dart wasn't that dangerous either. They said that accuracy also came as a nice big boost from this series. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I have seen just so many mixed results based off of that. It really seems like in terms of comparing against elite darts, we might be able to find a slight increase in accuracy from an N1 dart, depending on the blaster. That's the big part too. It really seems to depend on which blaster you're firing out of. This guy, I don't really know, even though it's got a big old wide inner diameter for that barrel. Ooh. Extreme accuracy, speed, and distance. They do seem to be a little bit more powerful. I don't have a problem with that, but I do also think that if we're once again targeting- Eight year olds, dude. Now we don't need to be trying to break the 100 FPS barrier with these kinds of darts. It's okay, reminder, it's okay to be like 80 FPS, even 70 feet per second, it's okay. It's fine guys, modding still exists and people have already found ways to mod the N-Series blasters to fire harder with or without the N-Series darts. And people have already found ways to modify the N1 darts to be more appropriate to their liking, which is hilarious. I think I do agree with the greater community that we did not need to reinvent the dart, at least a new diameter, to make the dart safer. We know Nerf is a business, Hasbro is a business, they're trying to make money out of their new ammo, and this, this is what makes the money. The blasters, maybe, maybe not. The darts, this is where the money comes from. And we've seen that based off of pricing too. We talk about wanting to make the blasters affordable. I don't know if I can back the pricing on the darts at this time, but I have bought them, so maybe I'm the fool. An important point to slide into that discussion is that I do like a variety of ammo types. I think that's what makes Nerf Nerf. Not that we have just one size dart. Yeah, that's right, if all of our games are just half darts, we may need to reconsider our hobby. I mean that we have various types of full length darts, we have half length darts, but the mega darts, the mega XL, the vortex, the balls, the, what else we have? Nitro cars, yeah! We have so many different types of ammo in the Nerf ecosystem to the point where we also consider like Boomco straws as viable ammo. Weird strange foam rockets from other companies, good to go. Frickin' pool noodles basically nerf when it comes to games and whatnot. We love ammo diversity in the nerf world and why then when you transition to something like airsoft or paintball, things become much smaller scope in terms of like, okay, that's an airsoft BB, that's a paintball ball. Nerf is just so wide and various. So we like to see different types of ammo and new ways to fire things. So reinventing or creating a new dart is not inherently a bad thing. We just like to see something new done with that ammo type. So dart getting bigger, fun, very easy. If it's going to roughly remain the same shape or size, there needs to be a pretty unique aspect to that. And that's ultimately why people had such a big problem with Nerf Ultra, myself included. Yes, the body was made out of a new type of foam, uh, but it didn't seem to offer anything unique other than being, uh, only being able to be fired out of the blasters that were provided. Sure, you could stack these a little bit more in magazines and they wouldn't deform so much, but we never saw, I don't know, crazy high magazine capacities as a result. It never seemed like they really went all in on something that would therefore benefit that kind of foam. And yes, the initial batch did snap. Eventually they made that so that wouldn't happen. It did happen. Do not tell me it didn't. I was able to do it myself, but they did fix it. And the fins in the back and the little nub 
They said it was for, you know, the Aerofin technology to make it fly further, go faster, but we knew. It was meant so they could only fire out of their unique blasters. Which is why when N-Series comes out and has trace elements of Nerf Ultra, it's just, they say it's to make it easier to understand how to load the blasters, but we just don't know how to feel about that still. You can see there's no Aerofin technology on the back there, and because it's hollow, it's squishier, and this is still foam, so it's actually easy to hold a handful of N1 darts, because Ultra was a pain to hold just like a bunch of those, they fall out of your hands. Don't believe me? I suffered. These don't do that, and so like overall, yeah, I don't have as big of a problem with the N series, the N1 dart compared to Ultra darts. Although, Ultra being a slightly larger diameter meant it could fit out of vintage blasters. And that was pretty fun. But the foam itself made it so it didn't always work perfectly. This could have been the same diameter as Ultra and we could have once again gone to vintage blasters and made it work. And some things it actually does work out of and others it doesn't because of that stupid nub in the back. God, we were so close to greatness. And one discussion point about the N1 dart was because of the nub in the back, they had to sort of reinvent their smart AR system, but it also served as a way to make it easier for people to load their darts uh, more easily. Yeah, which again, eight year olds do. I completely understand that. I think that's a noble thing to want to do because how many times have we seen magazines loaded backwards? Take for example, here's my pinpoint magazine. I can um, kind of tell, oh, there it is on the side, I can see the dart pointing for it. It's very faint though. Wouldn't you want this to be a little bit easier to see like which way you're supposed to load it? I mean, it's pretty obvious though. You just load it in the top you see there's that little space for a nub. So it's pretty obvious which way these darts should be loaded. And yet it's so easy to load it backwards. I mean, I could still do that. And I'll tell you, I have the footage to prove that I've actually done that in a game too. Having used the pinpoint in a few games now, I am no smarter than an eight-year-old. Eight-year-olds, dude. So like, what the heck? What's the point then? I don't also understand why this had to be super short compared to a standard elite dart. I thought that maybe it would still just be like an overall bigger dart so it's easier for small hands to grab. No, small hands can better manage a small dart. But if it's bigger and it had a big nub on the back, it would be easier to figure out how it fits in the magazine. I don't know. I'm just trying to get in their headspace for justifying that this just works. This is going to be so much easier than your Nerf magazines. And I think overall, I, I do get it. But man, let's talk about the pinpoint for a second. So yes, I did purchase the pinpoint with my own money. This is in fact the only N-Series Blaster that I own and that I've purchased myself. I have seen other ones, but this one is mine. I'm very mixed on how I feel about the pinpoint. I agree from others that it has a pretty cool look to it. I don't know if I love the overall design, but once again, eight year olds do. If they're trying to reinvent the eight year old category by making these things safer looking, there definitely is a toy element to this. Or I should say, I understand the idea of making toys look very much like toys. And I think companies like Dart Zone really are going to have to deal with those decisions down the road. They've been able to get away with it recently, but I don't know if they're going to be able to shy away from having to make decisions like this in the near future. Not sure how I feel about the built-in scope on top. I mean, a bolt action makes sense. I don't love the giant massive faux barrel. I mean, the aesthetic's cool, sure, but it's like, it's all hollow. So it looks like this thing is just completely missing some design elements there. And I could also just grab it in the middle or if I was holding it with like my off hand or like if I was a kid and I just wanted to grip it more. Well, now my hand is in the barrel. That doesn't seem like a good idea now, does it? The stock is also not huge, but hey, I'm a child-sized man, so eh, we've had worse. I've heard some people say that they think the shells are pretty rock solid. I, um, I'm gonna push back a little bit on that. While I do think overall it's pretty solid, I can still see the piece separation and maybe, maybe you can too? Like I can see into the internals of that seam and this is pretty easy to rotate. The plastic also just feels pretty soft it's just a noticeable downgrade from like 10 years ago when we were getting, you know, the end of the end strike elite line blasters. It just feels like a completely different timeline, which yes, I understand the design changes perhaps, but I don't understand the change in plastic quality other than 
cost cutting. But okay, you got your magazine, you put it into the blaster, pretty easy to know when it clicks into place. Eight year olds, be happy, be rejoicing. And then you pull it all the way back, takes a little bit of force to get it there, and you push it forward and it doesn't fire. Oh, that's cool. Oh wait, you didn't push it all the way forward yet. Oh good, now it locks into place and now pop. It's a pretty satisfying pop. And again, the power is respectable for a stock Nerf blaster. Is it 80 some odd FPS? Sure. But the operation is just, it's just not as smooth as I would have assumed for something that's supposed to be just overall easier to use for a younger demographic. I'm kind of shocked and I've had people actually pick this up and try firing it a few times and jam it. I mean, even here, I'm like trying to pull it back. And if it's not in like the perfect position, Oh, okay. It wouldn't pull back all the way and I had to pull the trigger and then it would. I think this is still going to give some younger folks some troubles because it's given me some troubles. And as I mentioned before, the accuracy of this thing in game is hit or miss. I guess they never miss. What year is it? Like sometimes I can actually hit what I'm aiming at from 40 feet away and other times from five feet away, the dart kicks to the left immediately after leaving the barrel. What the heck? Like I said, big, inside diameter of that pretty exposed barrel, so it shouldn't be hitting the sides, but the darts just don't care. And having now used the N1 darts through the summer, we've been able to see what they look like after sitting in the hot sun for a little bit of time. The answer is not so good. They get really soft after sitting in the open sunlight after like 10 minutes, and that can be a problem with a lot of darts. So I'm not saying that Nerf individually is uh, deserving to be shamed, but it's just worth noting, and I guess ultra darts for the win on this one, the N1 darts are very heat sensitive, and a soft dart is most likely going to deform, especially when that inside of the dart is completely hollow. I just find myself looking at these two darts and saying, I don't really see any distinct advantages of the N1 dart compared to the Elite dart. Yes, perhaps there's a little bit more accuracy, but as it stands, that's about it. The price of the pinpoint, I believe, is about 20 US dollars, which I think is a okay price. Um, I've seen it on sale very quickly. It was probably a better price, I suppose. But one that really catches my attention that I have seen in person as well is the Ward. The Ward's pretty funny. That is like, I thought was going to be their cheapest offering. The Ward being the two-shot blaster with a smart AR inside of it is kind of like the poster child of what the heck is going on here. Because I've seen some people report that it works just perfectly, and then a lot of people post that like, as soon as they fire the first dart, the second one immediately tries to escape. So basically, if your dart isn't perfectly seated inside, good luck with actually getting the desired functionality. And Nerf claims that they had to reinvent the smart AR system to make it work. But their example of like, a blaster with two darts in an AR system already kind of falls apart. I've also heard people say that after a little bit of use, the N1 darts become less and less reliable. I can kind of categorize that into the, you know, sitting in a little bit of sunlight probably does the same thing. So it seems like the more you use these darts, the worse they get, which yeah, depending on how you use it, any dart is subject to that. This little elite dart could also undergo some traumatic experiences and it probably won't fire as well as before. But just picking them up, it feels like the elite dart is just much more solid even if the back is completely open. It feels like the Nerf elite dart is just more resilient. Am I just like coping? And while it does seem that Nerf has achieved those desired prices on most of the N series blasters, some of them make odd choices when it comes to that dart distribution, because again, that's where the money is, the darts. So like the pinpoint included more than 10 in the blaster, I think. Yes? Yes. Maybe not quite double your darts, but still it's nice to include extras because that's what's going to happen, especially on a new ammo system. You're gonna need more darts. But then like the ward is a complete slap in the face. Oh, here's your new blaster, it has a capacity of two, here's your two darts. <laughs> Like what? How about a couple more than that? And then you go up in price range and you get the big old, the big, the big boy, 
the big, the big, the infinite. That one comes like with a whole heckin' amount of darts that you can refill and top up on the fly. So like, that's a pretty good value, I think. It's like there's a sliding scale of how many darts you include with the blaster depending on the price. And if it's dirt cheap, you get almost none. You get like just enough to fill it completely once. We really are cursed with knowledge these days and we've seen the design changes and the evolution of cost cutting through Nerf over the years. So it's hard to look at any blaster they come out with now and not be like, hmm, yeah, I saw that change on Alpha Strike. Oh, I saw that with Ultra. Oh, I saw that with Elite 2.0. Because I can tell you like, oh, it's nice that there's a little tack rail here. They cheaped out on the little attachment pieces. Um, the plastic quality ain't what it used to be. Uh, the scope has basically nothing inside of it except for hollow plastic, and there's no paint on this thing, except for the Nerf logo on one side. Yet even so, I feel like there are good N-Series blasters that have been put out, and I would still use things like this in a game if it was for a lower FPS cap and more people were using blasters like this. It could be fun. Granted, I'd need to get another magazine. They don't seem to sell those separately. Nice. I'm talking to you now in October, so it's been like three months since N-Series really started hitting the scene, and depending on where you live, they're still slowly trickling out. So we are not like fully adopted into the N-Series ecosystem, and Nerf has said that they're going to slowly phase out other darts in the upcoming years. It's not going to be a hard cut and then pfft. So it's hard to say when the best time is to reevaluate whether like N-Series is successful or not, because people have seen blasters on clearance already, but like, is that a local thing or is that Nerf's immediate response to, oh my gosh, N-Series bombing, N-Series bad, we are going bankrupt. Like, how could that be a reaction within like two months of release? It just doesn't make sense. It's gonna take time for clubs to introduce or not introduce N1 darts into their collection. And maybe by that point, there'll be N2 darts. If that's the reason they call it N1 darts, I am really upset and I'm not gonna be ever happy again. So perhaps by next summer, we'll see if the toy aisle is dominated by Nerf's N1 style dart offerings, N series blasters firing N1 darts, I still hate it. And that will give us a better idea if they really are all in on that commitment to change from the elite standard to the N1 standard and maybe they'll have new blasters by that point too, maybe they won't. They did at least learn a little bit from the launch of Nerf Ultra because Ultra came out swinging hard with one blaster. It's like, this is the Ultra one, it's gonna change the game, this changes everything. You will never be prepared again. And it launched right next to uh, Dart Zone's kind of biggest contribution to the hobby at the time. N-Series launched with a bunch of different offerings. So if you did go out and buy a new pack of darts, there were in fact other blasters you could get to test them out in. Some of them perform a little bit better, some of them not as much, but the point was, we actually had quite a few offerings. I've also fired N1 darts out of high-powered blasters, and yes, your accuracy may vary, as in there is no real accuracy. But again, I've seen people modify their darts, which I don't normally love, but if it just means like cutting them in half, and now you've got the N0.5 dart, then who am I to really judge? It's still safe. It's still, you know, got that soft rubbery head. I don't think we need to reinvent the um, washer dart or anything like that by making this thing full of hot glue or an airsoft BB or a fishing weight. So I think like in the mod community, we always find a way. We're always gonna find a way to turn something like this into a high powered competitive blaster. I'm using that word carefully here. Just because Nerf made a blaster that fires a different type of ammo doesn't mean that people aren't gonna get creative. Uh. And what I would like to wrap up with is that why I'm so kind of indifferent about N-Series is because this is just such a different time compared to like when Nerf Ultra launched or when any previous offering hit the market. When a new dart was last introduced that made so much noise, there wasn't as much competition from other companies. And now there is. So like when N-Series comes out swinging and they're like, and, and Nerf is like, oh gosh, here it comes guys, we're reinventing everything and you are not prepared. And they replace, hypothetically, right? They replace all their blasters on the shelf with an N1 dart, official like Nerf standard dart. This is it. You don't like it, don't buy it. Well, now you don't have to. I mean, think about it, especially for like us North Americans, we have so many great dart zone offerings there. X-Shot is becoming more competitive in that scene too. We have multiple types of half darts on the shelf. We have multiple types of 
decent full-length options too. There are more compelling options right next to it at arguably better prices, or I guess compared to N-series, like the same prices. This isn't just the Nerf show anymore. It doesn't matter only what they do and no one else can do anything about it because it's Nerf or <laughs> nothing on the shelf. We have so many other things to pick from, you literally can just ignore what Nerf is doing and buy something that works better for you. And that's what people have been doing. We like to joke that the casual consumers of Nerf are not very smart, but even they knew, like when Nerf released Ultra and other stuff, they knew what they liked and what they didn't. So give them some credit, because they're the ones who are really making or breaking Nerf's decisions uh, with something like N-Series, they're going to. So just pump the brakes a little bit. We don't need to make 30 minute rant videos about N-Series. Uh, maybe we do. We don't need to go all in on telling Nerf that they've made the worst decision ever because they've already committed to it. It's not the 2010s anymore. We have so many great offerings from so many different companies, which is just great for consumers like you and me. And if you do still want to check out the N-Series blasters, well then, good news. There are a bunch of different blasters for you to choose from. So do a little bit of research, find what you might be interested in, and maybe wait a little bit and see if uh, more clubs start adopting the N1 darts and they have a collection of them for you to actually field some of your blasters. And if you want to buy a pack just to test it out for yourself, I won't tell anyone. Shh. But you also shouldn't be reprimanded for like, oh, just trying it out for yourself out of curiosity. Oh, because of your one purchase, you're going to prove that you like the N series line. Don't feel bad about just trying things out, but understand, if you continue to buy this stuff, that will send the message. And that's why, me personally, I have a small collection of these darts at this point to try from, and I don't see myself buying anything in the near future. I'm waiting on a certain blaster to really appeal to me in the N-Series line, and so far, there's a couple that seem kind of cool, but overall, I just don't care that much. Eh. But if someone comes up to me and they're like, oh my gosh, look at my N-Series blaster, look at this mod I did for it. Cool, that's great. I'm glad that you've had fun with it. I hope that people can find some good uses of these blasters or all these shells. Personally, I've had more enjoyment watching this be used as a baseball bat against a pinata. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh! So I think that was a pretty concise way to uh, express all of my thoughts. But if you're still watching, thank you. And what do you think? Like, if you've actually listened to this and you are for some reason thinking that I'm like a paid for Hasbro shill who just wants N-Series to take over and other companies to fail, I congratulate you. That is an impressive amount of mental gymnastics, but I really am curious what people actually think about N-Series at this point. And like I said, I'll be really curious what people think about it a year from now. At that point, will Nerf still be as committed to their N1 dart is the future statement as they have said now? Don't eat the N1 darts. You can't eat the regular Nerf Elite darts and you can't eat the N1 darts. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Uh, subscribe for more N1 shenanigans because like I said, I still have darts so it means we can still fire them out of some blasters. Sorry, I was reconsidering my life, and I'll see you later. Eight-year-olds, dude.